This tutorial is brought to you by Free Switch Solutions. Get the Free Switch Advantage. Welcome back to Free Switch with Fred. My name is Fred Mutesa and I'm really really excited to be back with these videos. And today I'm back with a very interesting topic. How to install or configure Free Switch as a multi-company mode or multi-tenant mode. Uh, it's not really complicated, but it's quite interesting because uh, you can configure your free switch server to serve different companies and these will be acting and operating independently. But you as a system administrator or as a VoIP provider, you'll be doing your configurations in the same place under the same platform. As demonstrated in this graphic, all you will have to do is create a domain for every company that you want to provide your service to and make sure that that domain name points to the IP of your free switch system. After doing that, we shall proceed and do the configuration modifications and once we are ready with those, all these extensions that are registered under the different domains will be able to operate independently. No matter whether they have the same extension name, they will call whoever is registered under their domain without interrupting with the extensions in the other domain. In my setup, I've actually created two domains that are pointing to the same IP. Let's take an assumption that we have two customers. Customer one is called fred.imu.com and customer two is called fred1.imu.com. So these two domains are pointing to the same IP and our main goal is to make sure we configure the same extensions so the customers under fred.imul.com should be able to operate separately like a, an independent company and then the extensions under fred1.imul.com should be able to also operate separately. That is the idea that we want to achieve in this video. Now, in order to proceed with that, there are changes that we have to make. The only places we have to look at under our free switch system, we look at the directory. And remember, in my previous videos, I've told you that under directory, that is where we create the new users and we make modifications of how different users register with our free switch box. The other area to look at is a dial plan. And this is the area where we do the call routing. Otherwise, we are meant to tell the users and, and free switch itself where to send a call that is coming from a particular user or a particular domain. So the first thing we are going to do is we are going to save some time and, and duplicate the existing configuration file. I'm going to copy that file and create two different XML files. The first file I'll, I'll create will be fred.imul.com and then the second file will be fred1.imul.com and both of them are, are XML files. Then I also want to replicate the files inside the default directory. After replicating, we have to go into the individual XML files. Uh, we shall start with fred.imul.com.xml and edit the domain name itself. We set the domain name to fred.imul.com and then we also have to include the files in fred.imul.com folder. Uh, we set that this line, uh, the X processor, the preprocessor will include those files. Then we also have to rename the group to fred.imul.com. After doing that, we have to do the same thing for the fred1.imul.com file. The things that we do in that file, we edit the domain name and then we include all the files in the folder. That will mean that all the extensions we copied in from the default folder will be read by the new domain. After doing that, we have to go into the individual users and we delete the 
user context because by default every user that was created has a user context of default that means that they will not register to our new tenant so we have to delete that line and then we make sure that we include the user context set to the new domain name in every xml file As you can see, the said command has removed the user context line. And I can also show you that in the default tenant or in the default domain, the user context line is still there. So we are going to do this in the fred.imu.com and fred1.imu.com. We are going to delete that line. Then we go into the XML files and add a variable that basically tells the new domain that this is the user context you're going to use. After doing that, we have to create the DAO plan and this will be done for both tenants. Again, in the DAO plan, we have to duplicate the existing files and the, the, the default folder. We go into the folder and copy the contents of default and default.xml to the new domains. That is Fred1 and Fred. After doing the duplicates, we have to edit, of course, we go into fred.imil.com and then we edit the context. Remember, we, we change the user context, so we're changing the, the DAO plan and setting the context to fred.imil.com. And then we also have to include the files in the domain fred.imil.com. This is something that we shall do for fred.imu.com and fred1.imu.com. Now we have to make sure that we edit the internal profile. We go into SIP internal.xml and we comment out the lines that force extensions to register to default. So we have to, to comment out these three lines, the force registration. And then we also comment out the force subscription. And then we also comment out the force register domain. Once you have commented out these three lines in internal profile, you will have to reload both the DAO plan and the internal profile. After doing that, you, we are going to do some test calls to see if our configurations have actually been implemented. I'm going to do reload XML and then reload mode Sophia. And then after that, I will try to register the extensions. 
Remember our domains are pointing to the same IP. So the changes we've made show that there have, there have been aliases that have been added. That is Fred1 and Fred2 as highlighted. I'm going to pull up my soft phone and try to register an extension. The first thing I'll show you is that I'm going to register extension 1000 at fred.imul.com. Let's see if it registers. It has been added. I will add another account, 1002 at fred1.imu.com. As you can see, these extensions won't be able to call each other. If I go and show registration, you can see that I have 1002 registered under Fred1, and then I have 1000 under Fred. So if I try to call this extension, for example, if I try to call using extension 1002, and then I try to call 1000, it will definitely not work because under Fred1, we do not have any person registered as 1000. To prove that to you, I'm going to create another account under fred1.imu.com and that will be 1003. So this extension should be able to receive a call from 1002 because they're under the same tenant. Let us test this out. So if I call 1003, you can see the call is ringing. And if I answer, of course, I'll get music on hold. because they're both registered on the same soft phone. But that is proof enough that we have managed to create a tenant out of the same free switch. Let us also test a user registered under Fred. So if I call from 1000 at fred.imu.com and I call 1003, it will not work because they're in different tenants or they are taken as different companies. So under fred.imu.com, I can add another extension which could actually exist on another tenant. Let's say if I add 1002 at fred.imu.com. Enter the password and then enter the domain which is fred.imu.com. The account has been added. So in this case, it means we have two extensions of 1002, but they exist in different domains. And you can see that now 1000 is able to call 1002, which has just registered inside its own domain. If I show registrations, you can actually see all the extensions belonging to different tenants. I have 1002 at Fred, and then I also have 1002 at Fred1. In summary, this is how you configure a multi-tenant mode. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I can't wait to hear from you. If you have any questions, shoot down in the comments. Thank you for watching. See you in the next video. If you want to advance your knowledge in free switch, Check out our website for the best training offers or you can meet us at the Glucon Conference in Illinois, Chicago.